So guys, welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Really Social Estate. Today we have very interesting guests that I've been uh, waiting for this one for quite a long time because this is a, a very cool guest. Uh, as you see, I'm going to introduce you to Brett D. Scott. I'm just going to go through a little bit of information of his uh, and the reason why you should pay attention to this man. He's doing some incredible things. Uh, when it comes to the coaching mindset. So he's a freedom coach, PAG consultant. Uh, if you're looking to reprogram your mind for success, if you're tired of getting the same results year after year, this is a man for you to get in contact. You should go and check it out. Of course, brettdscott.com. Uh, go to the website and just check him out. He has very incredible story, which we're going to cover. I don't want to go into a lot of details uh, you know, it's just a quick sneak peek for you guys to understand this man is all about breaking through uh, the barriers in our minds and getting brand new results because this is, uh, again, uh, interesting times we're living on. Currently, if you're watching this, we're still in a COVID. But this man, I know he's going to help us to, hit, to get brand new results. And that's why I'm very excited for this interview. And I just want to say a big thank you, Brett, uh, today for being on the show. So thank you. Hey, you're welcome. No, thanks for uh, thanks for asking me to come on. Yeah, and look, um, it has been a trying time for many, and yeah. uh, in fact, you know, often well, actually, right when it all, all all came down, or when was that start of April or somewhere around that time, yeah. I remember thinking um, how lucky I was. And obviously, as we know, no such thing really as luck. You know, I, I'd just been uh, fortunate enough that I'd actually started the journey quite a bit before so when it all hit um, I certainly wasn't uh, I didn't get taken away with the emotion uh, I'd already meant to prepared myself for any occasion you know and that's essentially what I do now with uh, with my clients and with people who follow me is uh, I help them to understand the best ways of being able to break out of whatever they're stuck in because uh, you know most of the times in fact I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time it's not what other people are doing. It's not what the conditions are about. It's actually what's going on in your head. So it's our own limitations, our own beliefs that are stored in our subconscious mind that are, yeah. you know, going to keep us where we are if we don't decide to make the uh, decision to actually change and to actually reprogram parts of ourselves that aren't working so that if anything like this, God forbid, ever happened again, <clears throat> you're not actually uh, having to re retrain, reprogram, you know, you've already set, you know, that's why, as I said, when this all came down, when this all hit us uh, here in Australia, um, I was very prepared. Uh, I had people coming, more people came to me uh, than I'd had previously. And I think because they saw that, you know, energetically they could see that I wasn't hard done by. And in fact, I was actually becoming stronger. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. So uh, as you see guys right here, uh, like from a first word, this mind is already, uh, this man is already diving in into the mindset and shifting the mindset and what it actually takes to break through these limiting beliefs. So if we just kind of stop and go back to where you started, because you, you have a very interesting journey, uh, you know, of how did you discover uh, the mindset and coaching? So maybe you can take us through uh, you know, how did it happen? Because I know you started uh, your journey in 2006. And uh, like, why did it happen, first of all? And why did you choose this path for yourself and for your own business? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. And look, um, I'm good at doing long-winded. So I could definitely take you on a very long journey. But yeah. I'll attempt to make it uh, nice and concise so you can ask me more, more questions. So in 2006, a friend of mine, uh, I was living in Melbourne in Australia at the time. I now live in Brisbane. And in 2006, a friend of mine said, hey, I've got this uh, amazing movie. It's just been released. I've got it on this little, uh, probably not too dissimilar to one of these, a little USB stick. And he brought it around and he plugged it into my TV. And he started playing this movie and I'd never heard of it. And of course, it was only brand new and it wasn't out in the cinema it was certainly something that was kind of underground and it was a movie called the secret and yeah. i'm sure many of your listeners or watchers have uh, 
have watched or read the book. Uh, yeah, please Robert comment. And- please comment. Please comment below. Anyone who see the who see the movie or read the book? Yeah, it's quite quite a inspirational book, definitely. Yeah, and look, uh, you know, I've met met and talked to many many people who have had a similar, um, I guess, awakening. You yeah. know, and the secret, uh, Rhonda Byrne, uh, interestingly enough, is from Melbourne as well. So I actually yeah. saw the movie in Melbourne. Uh, where she's from and uh you know and now obviously you know worldwide i know people from the smallest countries you'd never even imagine a movie like the secret uh had hit but it has you know millions upon millions of people have actually seen it or read the book yeah. and obviously she's gone on to do many other things she's got a feature film coming out uh was meant to be out now but obviously with covid it's been set back with katie holmes as the main wow person in that movie so it's a proper feature film based on yeah. the story of Rhonda's life with the movie the secret so when it when i watched it i remember thinking oh my god like it actually it literally blew my mind you know and because Rhonda's background was uh cinematography or or tv or movies something along those lines so she actually knew how to create that type of uh production mm-hmm. and that was to her benefit because it was like watching a feature film to me, but here is someone telling you this is real. You can change just by changing the way you think you can change certain aspects of your life. Well, more importantly for the secret, it was more about you can attract, you can manifest things into your life. You can manifest money. And I'm thinking, what? Manifest money. (laughs) And uh, I certainly had some great success. And in fact, um, in 2007, I actually won Residential Salesperson of the Year, which was a real estate, a top real estate uh, salesperson of the year award in Victoria, which is the, the state, which Melbourne is the city, the capital city of. Yeah. And so that was a pretty big accolade. And I certainly wasn't the, I hadn't sold the most property, but there was a certain way that I was able to win that award because of the way that I actually looked after people. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, long story short, every kind of every career that I've chosen has been in service. So it's always been about helping helping people in some way, mm-hmm. way or form. And so it's no surprise that I should be in this particular career now, where I'm coaching people to you know become their best selves and break through their limiting yeah. mindsets. Um, and now, you know, when I think back to all the careers that I've had, and I've had some amazing ones. Uh, when, my first career, I was a concierge in hotels, worked my way up from being a, a bell attendant or a bell hop, um, right the way up to a chief concierge. And I had my own magazine publishing business, which was called Concierge. I actually promoted a magazine, which was Informing the Informers. Uh, sold that off, beca- then got into real estate, became a top real estate agent, got out of that, got into fitness, got into... Um, uh, fitness sales where I was helping a business coaching company to actually uh, help other fitness trainers. So I've kind of like been on this trajectory and I can, when I think back to all those different roles, as much as I enjoyed them, I didn't feel like I loved it. Like I, I enjoyed aspects of them, but I didn't love it. I now, I it. thankfully, yep. thankfully, <laughs> and I would say it has a huge amount of, the huge amount of the reason why I actually love what I do now is because I've actually had the changes that I've had. So I'm, I'm now educating people on things that I've been able to get through myself now. Uh, and you, you probably know this, but for 43 years, I basically feel like I was completely stuck as in every time I would start to have some level of success, I'd find a way to sabotage myself and come crashing down and in 2014 i had uh, a moment uh, one of the biggest defining moments of my life and at the time i thought it was my life was over and if i wasn't a very positive person i probably would have been the type of person that probably would have thought you know there's no point living at that point and what happened was i received a phone call i was working for that fitness business coaching company that i mentioned and the admin manager called me and said we've got an issue with the invoicing and i said not a problem i'll be home soon i'll redo the invoice and she said no the problem is for the last 18 months so for 18 months i had been over invoicing which meant and i said to her okay well 
what are we talking about? And she said 50000 around $50,000. I'm thinking, how the hell did it get that far out of control? Yeah. You know, and at first I thought it was a joke. And then I, once I realized it was real, I thought, how am I going to get through this? And the reason, like in a, in a normal circumstance, you know, $50,000 short sounds like, you know, a decent amount of money, but there's ways to get around $50,000, not $500,000. But... I'd got myself to this point. It was the straw that broke the camel's back because as I mentioned about all those times where I'd start to have success and find a way to sabotage. So we finally, um, my wife and I had finally moved to this place that we'd dreamed of living. So we, you know, had our, we had our, uh, what do you call them? Our storyboard or our, uh, you know, our vision board, vision boards on the wall. And, you know, at one of our dreams was to move to the Sunshine Coast here in, in Queensland. And we did it. We finally moved there. I helped my partner to stop working. So it was just me that was bringing the income in. Uh, we'd actually had some savings and we invested in starting a couple of businesses. When this hit, we had no savings. The businesses that we started had not taken off. Uh, I had no way of borrowing. And at the time, I hadn't even told my ex, uh, my now ex, I should say, hadn't told my wife at the time that I had gone bankrupt three, three years earlier. So it was like all these things that were just kept adding up, adding up, adding up. And then finally, I had no way of controlling because normally what would happen is I'd try and control the situation. This time it was out of control and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And uh, the reason it was the best thing that ever happened to me is in that moment of uh, when I finally stopped the self pity in that moment, I remember thinking to myself, I, there was two things that were going on in my mind. Number one, I said, uh, I need, I never, ever, ever want to be in this position again. I never want to be this person again. When I figure out how to fix myself, I should write a book. And teach other people who are stupid like me, because that's how I felt at the time, although I wasn't stupid. It was just a stupid situation. And, uh, you know, the thing is, and I'll get to this later on, is that the thing is, your subconscious mind, if you do not, um, no matter how strong your will is, your subconscious mind will always go back to what the pro whatever program is running or has been running, it will go back to the program. It's like a... You think about an aeroplane that's flying in the air and it, you hit a bit of turbulence and it goes a bit off course. Well, the autopilot, when the pilots aren't flying it, will actually bring it back on track. That's exactly what our subconscious mind is like. So if you start to, like I said, start to have some really good success, well, my autopilot would kick in and say, hang on a minute and bring me back on course. You know, so even though I could easily say, well, you know, it wasn't my fault. I still made decisions. I still had choice. So I still made decisions and I made a lot of wrong ones. So I got to that in that moment. Um, I thought, yeah. And if, if anyone knows about emotional impact, so whenever you're having a release, whenever you're having a cry, which uh, for me, uh, that was like the first cry that I can remember having as an adult and probably not too dissimilar for many men, you know, we think, you know, got to be strong, got to be tough, got to, yeah. you know, do it myself. And we don't let our emotions out. I certainly, you know, wasn't one that would cry, you know, even in movies, <laughs> I wasn't a crier, you know, so I know all this um, pent up, you know, frustration. And finally I let it out. And, uh, and so that first thought where I never want to be this person again, guess what? Subconscious belief. Anytime you have an emotional impact, whatever that positive thought is that's going on in your head gets stored as a subconscious belief. Mm -hmm. It's the only time that we don't have to manually program it. So auto suggestion or affirmations that people do, that's the manual way that we do as humans to reprogram through repetition. When this happens, it's a bit of a gift in its way. So that's done. And making the decision to write a book. Now, at the time, I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. Because if I can fix myself and I can understand how it all works, I can then teach other people how to do the same. And afterwards, you know, when the tears had stopped, I remember thinking, who's going to read a book from me? Like, it just didn't make any sense, you know, because I'm now in that conscious thought process, mm -hmm. you know, uh, only knowing what I know, because, you know, 
the person I am today was very different to the person I was back then. And the beautiful thing is that um, now I've actually got a book. Um, I'm a co-authored best-selling author uh, of a book called I Fly. And I meant to have it in the, <laughs> the room, but it's downstairs. I'll have to go and grab it if, uh, if you want to see the cover. But we can always share it um, on your, sure. yeah. on your uh, link, link below. That's where you're going to find it. Yep. Yeah, awesome. So I'll give you the link so people can find it. So my story and, part, and obviously that part of the story that I just shared, there's more to it. Um, that's in the book. Um, but I've actually got another book, my main book, the book that is my big goal. And, uh, you know, the, the intention for the book that I decided back in 2014, this is a book that I'm working on. Now, I finished it at the end of uh, 28, uh, sorry, end of 2019 last year. And I went on Jack Canfield. If anyone knows who Jack Canfield is, I went on yeah. his show. Chicken, chicken, uh, chicken soup for the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken soup for the soul. Um, so Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen wrote that book, chicken, for, chicken soup for the soul. In fact, um, I'm going off track a little bit, but funny story. My mum, when my mum used to run a bookstore and when that oh. book came out in the nineties, she remembers it coming out and thinking, they stolen my idea because <laughs> my mum had an idea to get, you know, all these, uh, cause if no one knows what the book's about, it's, it's essentially a lot of uplifting stories or people's, you know, yeah. maybe tragic stories to becoming triumphant. And mm -hmm. that's essentially what my book is, is about. So it's a little bit like a chicken soup for the soul. Uh, this book called I fly it's, uh, uh, 20, 20 authors sharing true stories about um, their journey from tragedy or, or, um, trauma yeah. some people uh to having amazing triumph and uh so that book's great and it, in fact that book was meant to be my second book so my main book i thought i'd you know pretty much finished at the end of 2019 well i had a, a structural editor go through it um, whilst i was actually um in america because i was on jack's show he uh he has a studio in santa barbara where he lives mm -hmm. And his show is called Talking About Success. And he basically interviews people who have had, you know, amazing rises to success. Some people, you know, quick, like me, and yeah. some people, you know, over time. And it was, uh, it was very surreal being on that show. And funny enough, my goal that I'd set, the actual day that I was on set was that the day my goal was, uh, was to be realized. And I wow. pretty much realized a main the main part of the goal but my main book that i mentioned which is called supercharged freedom and uh you know hopefully in the next couple of months uh, my book coach that i work with we're actually working on it together because i had it finished had a structural letter to go through it and there's a lot of work <laughs> that needed to be done to yeah to really because my my hope and my my intention for that book is that it's going to be a triple best-selling book. You know, I want it to be a, you know, and I'm still not sure how I'm going to do it, but we don't need to know the how. Yeah. You know, New York Times, uh, Wall Street Journal, um, Amazon, which I, I have got a triple best-selling Amazon book, so I know how to do that. But I don't know how to do a New York Times or a Wall Street Journal. But, you know, if you desire something strong enough, this is exactly what I teach, you know. Um, so that, yeah, very excited for that to come out. And already, like, we've, we've got halfway through finishing the edits, and it's amazing. Um, so I'm really excited for that to be, uh, to be released. But yeah. back on track for you in regards to, you know, the story. Uh, essentially, in 2018, in November of 2018, so for the next four years, so when I had that, you know, breakdown, <laughs> that's what I got, the breakdown, um, I had a little bit of an epiphany or an idea, you know, that was cemented. And for the next four years, I went on a real healing process. So my partner at the time was pregnant, three months pregnant. So that in itself was, um, was both good and bad because the, the bad part, you know, I was thinking, will I ever get to be the father of this child? You know, will my wife or my ex uh, ever want to have me in her life? So you know, in some ways you could look at it as a negative, but the positive was that I thought, well, I, I've got to do my best to recover <laughs> from this position, yeah. you know, so it was a driver, you know, and I grew up without a dad or a dad that wasn't around. So, you know, I always said, no matter whether I was with my partner or not, um, I was always going to make sure if I have any children.
working for and I continued to work for them. I only stopped working with them back in October of last year. So that was, uh, you know, almost seven years of being with them, which was pretty, <laughs> pretty good achievement. Um, and, you know, and they've got a lot more, they've got a lot of respect for me for being able to do that, you know, and it's something that I've never done in the past. I'd never, you know, if I had a big debt, you know, I would find a way to get out of having to pay it back. Well, there's so much, there's so much in that. It's not just paying back the money, it's the integrity and it's the, the, the belief you have in yourself that you can do something quite um, aspiring. So I did that at the time when I had to work a full-time job, I was studying, you know, I had to do another job. So, you know, I was doing so much, you know, and I was helping my, my, my now ex partner to be a stay at home mum for the first three years of my son's life. So she didn't have to work. You know, so there was a lot of good that I was doing for that next four years, but I, I, I still wasn't doing what I said I was going to do, you know, and November of 2018, I was, uh, if anyone knows who Bob Proctor is, he's been my, uh, you know, my mentor for 13 years, because I didn't mention this when I saw The Secret, uh, if anyone's seen it or read it, uh, there's a lot of amazing people. Actually, Jack Canfield is in the movie mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, oh, sorry, Dr. Joe Vitale. Uh, John Asaraf, um, Lisa, anyway, powerful lots people, of yeah, people. yeah, yeah, powerful people. Um, Esther Hicks, someone that I've only just recently got into in January, I really started to get into Abraham. Um, but Bob Proctor was the one person who he spoke, and I just went, Oh my god, who is this man? It was like he's so enlightened, you know, yeah. you know, when you hear something from someone and you think that's true what that person's saying is true, 100% true. I don't even know if what they're saying is true, but I feel it. When you feel someone's energy and, you, and, you, and they believe what they're saying, you believe what they're saying. And for me, Bob Proctor, any, like for the whole time, right up until November of 2018, when I had this breakthrough, as in a real, a real breakthrough, he was the one person when I'd hear whatever he'd say or he'd put something on social media, I'd think, ah, oh, you're speaking my language. Like... Whereas there are other people for me, like Tony Robbins and, uh, and even Jack Canfield and others who are great, like really good. And sometimes their message would get to me, but Bob, because every single time Bob would say something, I think, yep, that's it. I love it. So in November of 2018, Bob had a, actually it was in, the actual uh, event was in uh, October, but I didn't watch it until November or listen to it. And it's called the paradigm shift. And if you haven't done one of Bob Proctor's events, um, i uh, you got to do it. Like he, he just recently, we had a, a science of getting rich event, which was all online because we're all stuck at home. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the live events, wow, absolutely amazing. Anyway, this paradigm shift, it's a three day event and probably day two, he's firing off some wisdom. Can't even really remember what the words were that he used, but he was so pat, you know, he's, he, if you've ever heard him <laughs> at times, he's like yelling through the, yelling through the microphone and you're like, whoa, anyway, whatever he said, it hit me so hard. And I think it was something along the lines of you can do it too. And I started to cry. Now this time it's not in a negative way. I'm not feeling bad. I'm feeling good, like feeling yeah. energized, you know, and I'm thinking, well, <laughs> what's going on? I've never had an experience like this ever in my life, especially a positive one. I thought, um, and in, I thought to myself, what is going on? I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm crying. And in my, in my head, I could hear you're going to be successful this time. They were literally the words, whether it was my voice or whether it was the universe, you know, maybe I'll know <laughs> later on on my passing. Um, but it was such a, uh, such a moving, you know, it's one of those moments where I knew it was absolute truth. I believed it straight away. And of course, when you believe it, that became your belief. Subconscious. Yeah. So, became yeah, yeah. my belief. You know, and ever, ever since, like literally from that moment, every single day, right up until this day that we're talking right now, I have continually improved, continually added to my repertoire, continually learned. You know, keep, um, I was saying it today, I did a live today and I was talking about uh, feeding, feeding your mind with the right fuel. You know, because back then I was, you know, not feeding it with, with great fuel. You know, watching mindless television, listening to the news, reading the newspaper, you know, just filling my head with a lot of, you know, negative garbage. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, some things we need to be aware of, but if something's really important, you're going to find out about it. So, you know, I wasn't reading a lot of books back then. As soon as I, met, as soon as I had that epiphany, I thought, okay, 
but if I'm going to be successful, what do I need to do? How do I start? <laughs> and I said, well, what does Bob do? And I thought, well, he, he reads this book. Okay, this book, Thinking Grow oh, Rich. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, the classic, the classic. Yeah, everybody knows that one. Not everybody, sure, but they, yeah, who, well, who, whoever, a, whoever doesn't know it, you have to know it. You have to read it. If you don't know this book um, written by Napoleon Hill, uh, I, I promise you it's, it's such an important piece of literature. Yep. And it, it, it's almost like, you know, Bob calls it his Bible because he has read it every single day now for 59 years. Wow. Now, every single day, same book. Same book. That's insane. Every single wow. day, like still. And, you know, people <laughs> and people and uh, I haven't had the chance to ask him this, but people because I've heard people ask him, they'll go, are you serious? Like you still to this day are reading that book like yeah. every single day. You don't like skip a day or skip a week. Repetition. Repetition is just, yeah. Yeah. Every single day he reads it. So he doesn't read the whole thing every single day, but he'll read yeah. parts of it. Um, and in fact, Bob, you know, as and I'm going, getting ahead of myself, but as you become a consultant and work with Bob uh, directly, he'll get you to read certain chapters or certain sections of certain books for exactly what you just said, repetition. Yeah. Now, uh, I even write out certain chapters or certain, um, like the self-confidence formula, uh, which is from, uh, <laughs> which is funny enough, is from Think and Grow Rich, the self-confidence formula that Napoleon Hill wrote. Um, I could recite it to you right now, but I, I won't because it'll take up too much time. Um, and even the Serenity chapter, another one of Bob's favorite books is called As a Man Think It. Yeah. And there's a chapter in that called Serenity. Now, I remember when I thought I'm going to take on this task of uh, writing it out, reading it and memorizing it. I thought this is, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But anything, absolutely anything that you decide you're going to do if you do it with repetition every single day and you're persistent and you continuously do it and just keep telling yourself you're, going to, you're actually going to you're going to you're going to remember it you're going to store it if that's what you want to do of course um, it'll happen and it's the same way you know when we think about consuming even consuming a book you know i'm listening to um an audio book at the moment uh jim quick I don't know if you've heard of him i don't think so he's no. uh, no. So Jim, Jim Quick is considered uh, the number one brain coach in the world. Uh, definitely in, in America, but definitely, but is known to be the number one brain coach in the world. I know, I know, and, sorry for interrupting, but I know John Asaraf, he's working on some powerful stuff when it comes to exploring the mind and how it works in the brain science. I know he's working on some great stuff as well. Yeah. So yeah. John and uh, I think John, I might be getting uh, my wires crossed, but he, there's Dr. Daniel Amen as well, who's very big on the brain. And I think even you'll find that uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza definitely mm -hmm. has a huge amount of knowledge when it comes to the brain yeah. and to the mind. But yeah, I have seen John uh, digging into that a bit. But uh, Jim Quick, uh, he's, he, when he was growing up, he was called the boy with the broken brain. He had a, he had a fall and uh i don't know if it was some sort of lesion or something and it uh, caused him to have a lot of difficulty even talking let alone you know remembering anything mm -hmm. uh, and now he could recite you know a whole book to you if you wanted to um he he has an amazing way of actually storing it and and he teaches you know teaches people how to do it anyway he's got a book his first ever book called limitless and i was just listening listening to it um or even today, <laughs> I was listening to it yesterday. And uh, he essentially, there was a reason why I was telling you about Jim Quick. I've lost my train of thought. We'll come back to Jim Quick. Yeah, sorry for um, interrupting with the John Asaraf, but I thought, you know, no, that's, 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 right. that's just good to mention. You know, well, there is some powerful, again, people who are exploring the mindset part. And, you know, I would love to, again, touch, a, you know, a few points because there's a lot sure. for us to cover. Because mindset uh, in general, you know, like people, when they look at the coaches and I know multiple of mindset coaches, myself personally, I talk with them personally, face to face, not via Zoom and in good times where people used to shake hands and, you know, hug each other. So, but there are, there's a lot of people who have a false perspective on mindset coaching. They think, oh, it's just, you know, like, like, let's be plain plain and simple. Like it's manipulation. You're just expecting things like you're praying to the universe and you like, Oh, please give me money. And you know, like it's, it's never coming, but sometimes you hear the stories, 
which people, you know, they just hold on to those stories because, because they want to believe that success is very easy. Like simple story, like, you know, like, oh, like, let's say Michael, he was, you know, in, in this bad situation, let's say bankrupt, you know, and he's like praying to the universe. Oh, please, like, you know, I want to change. I want to do something better. And he, let's say he writes a check, you know, and he's like, writes the same check, like empty check every day. And one day the magical checks like came into the mailbox and saved his life. So, and people like, but that, how often does that happen? You know, like, cause we're talking in the COVID times and let's be realistic. Like right now it's the time when people have to break through the patterns and maybe we can talk about that. And, you know, just to get, cause again, people need to take massive action right now. As you talk the book, what's again the title for your up, uh, upcoming book? Uh, so the one that's out now is called I Fly, and the, um, which, the is, second- which my story is in. But the second one, which will actually give people the understanding about how to apply, how to actually not only learn it, but actually apply it into their life is called Supercharge Freedom. Super, so yeah, so that's what I wanted to ask you. So Supercharge yeah. Action, that's what people should take as well. Because yeah. that's, that's, that's where it starts. I totally agree. I love the mindset, like, you know, because that's what it took for me. To, to change everything for life, like to change, you have to change, right? That's plain and simple. You have to change yourself. You have to change your mind. But if we can talk about what you mentioned before, this kind of a plane and flying on autopilot, again, and having the right yeah. system to make sure that you're, you know, cruising and landing in the right place instead of crashing all the time. So maybe you can give people, you know, a, a kind of few nuggets or you can go as long as you want because I think it's very important because a lot of people right now, they're kind of, shaky they're unsure they don't know what's going to happen and that's that's where the mind gets in control right the external environment the you know the news the the people the negativity so people need that so maybe you can give us you know with a few tips like how people can change their uh, perspective on things and mindset in general yeah okay so let's let's start with um what you just said about michael (laughs) imaginary michael who's bankrupt and writes these blank checks and eventually gets a check in the mail yeah um look these things can happen like not it does yeah not like not like god just writes a check and it and arrives but you know as you said before you know actions required but yeah. also beliefs required yeah if you don't believe that something can happen and in fact when we start you know let's say you've never let's say you decide that you want to earn fifty thousand dollars for the year and you've never earned fifty thousand dollars you've earned 25 or you've earned thirty thousand that's the most you've ever earned so earning $50,000 is just like, I have no idea how I'm going to be able to do that. Or even doubling, let's say 25 to 50. You've never made 50. So you don't know how it feels to have 50,000. So it's very easy for you to say, well, um, you know, that's probably not going to happen because I've never achieved that before. Don't know how it feels. Limiting and when belief. you go through the process, yeah, limiting belief, your own limiting, <laughs> your own limiting belief. Because I'm sure uh, consciously you could say, well, I know someone that's earned 50,000. I know someone that's earned 100,000. I know someone that's earned, you know, 200,000, whatever it might be. So you know that it's possible, but you don't know that it's possible for you. And this is where most people get stuck. I definitely got stuck as well, you know. Um, I think everybody did. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm using the money one, but there's, there's many other things I could yeah. use. And I, I use it because Bob uses it as well. Uh, in fact, when I met Bob for the first time, he said to me, which he asked everyone, you know, what's the most you ever earned in a year? And I used to think, you know, what, why does he ask that question? You know, what, what does it mean? And, and the reason he asks it is because he knows where your mind is at. He knows how much growth you've had. Because yeah. um, someone that, you know, essentially what it means is there, there are, you could be consciously competent and you can also be unconsciously competent. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of unconscious competent before? I uh, heard it, yep. but maybe you can expand it again a little bit for, for the people who never heard about it. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm going to dig into the subconscious mind because it's, it's such an important thing. And I'm going to tell you, remind me to tell you a ratio. What there's, so in neuroscience, you know, there was a study done and I'll tell you the, the ratio of conscious versus subconscious. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty ridiculous. So, um, so going back to the money. So Bob, yeah, us, you know, how much, <laughs> what's the most you ever in a year? And the reason he asks that question is because he knows where you're at. He knows if you've, that's the most you've ever earned, then that's kind of where your mind is at. You haven't really expanded to be able to earn more money. And not that life is just about earning money because, you know, there are plenty of things you can do 
that make you happy where you don't have to spend money. But the reason money is such an important um, commodity or an important thing in life is that it gives us choice, gives you the ability to choose how you live, gives you the ability to help more people, gives you the ability to be a selfish person if that's, if that's your choice as well. Um, but, you know, it's even, even myself now as a coach, you know, I'll often, I don't ask, ask that same sort of question, but I will find out from people, you know, do you mind telling me how much you actually earn? Cause you know, and then added to that, you know, how much do you want to earn? Mm-hmm. And that's also, you know, a key indicator because that can sort of say, well, if, if you say I earn, you know, $80,000 and geez, I'd love to earn a hundred. Well, your gap is really only 20,000. It's not, hundred thousand you got to work out how do i gap that twenty thousand um but anyway. again, again that's a limiting belief i mean you know people they always yeah. know like i mean if you if you if you actually stop and think as i love the word potential like if you just tapped in a little bit because this again guys guys and girls you're watching the at the, at the man who tapped in into his potential and i'm sure you already know like you said like listen i'm gonna put this book out I don't know how I'm going to become three times best. Like I already found out Amazon. I'm not sure how it's going to work on New York. And like, you need to figure things out, but you're reaching for a lot, probably financial Sorry. as well. But it's just uh, for people to understand there's different levels. So potential, I mean, it's unlimited how people can earn, right? And reaching like for 20, I just want to earn 20,000 more. I don't think that's that's the right goal in the first place. Well, it, and look, it's still... It's still a useful goal. It's not something that you should dismiss, but so whenever I, you know, this is the same for me. The reason I've had so much success or the reason I've been able to, you know, have a, you know, I think a pretty huge amount of success in a very short space of time is for a couple of reasons. One, once I finally understood the thing that was stopping me or the thing that the reason I kept sabotaging myself, were because I had these paradigms, which I had, when I heard the word paradigm, I still didn't know what a paradigm was. What is this paradigm business? It's a weird word. Um, but understanding that it's, it's a multitude of habits that we build up in our subconscious mind. So a paradigm is a multitude of habits. So it's the habitual belief, which becomes the habitual behavior. Mm-hmm. So when, you know, and, and this is, I'm, I'm maybe going off track a little bit, but it'll, I'm sure it'll make sense. So it's like when you go to the gym, you know, there's a recipe for you becoming muscular. There's a recipe for you be losing weight. There's a recipe that takes time, you know, and sometimes you can make things happen quicker. You're going to have quantum leaps. You know, there are, you know, certain body types, you know, but if we, it's the same with a really good trainer who understands how to diet, who understands how to train, who understands the repetition, knows and the same thing in the gym, it's repetition. You know, and I was a trainer as well. So yeah. I understand that. But it's the same thing with the mind. You know, it takes a bit of time. You can have quantum leaps when, because it's all, it all comes down to the limitations you mentioned before. If you can push through those limitations if you, and not push through, if you can replace those limitations quickly, and that means being persistent, being continuous, going through the repetition as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. If you can get into this new habit of doing that, you'll find things move very quickly. You know, that's why, that's why it happened for me. So now the number one thing, whenever I get a new client, the first thing we do, no matter what, even if if this is the only thing you did, you probably have a good chance of winning. Even if I didn't teach you anything else and you, you, you cotton onto it before when I talked about just the $20,000 gap. So if you said to me, you know, I really want to earn a lot of money. I said, okay, well, what's a lot of money to you? And you said a million dollars. I really love to earn a million dollars. Well, money is just energy as I'm sure you know. So, well, what are you doing with the money? It's not, it's not significant enough and see the, and actually I'll get to the point of why this is significant. Having a big goal, really reaching to, if you don't have a purpose and a purpose is, good as well but if you don't have a purpose that's okay lock into a big goal something you true like you personally truly desire and i say you personally because sometimes we've got partners we've got kids and we think oh i want to look after my partner and look after my kids I'm not saying don't do that but if you're going to change a lot of this you know non-serving non-productive behavior that is not helping you you're going to have to do things that you don't necessarily want to do 
And what that means is your programming that's running, when you start to do these new things, it's going to go, hey, hang on a minute. This isn't how you operate. Talking about that autopilot and the plane, it'll want to bring you back on track. So it'll keep coming up with excuses. It'll throw things in your way to try and stop you. You know, and it's not doing it negatively. It's not trying to hurt you or harm you. It's trying to, it's trying to help you. Yeah. It's our fight or flight that is built in, yeah. you know, and so it's trying to get you back on track. Like, no, what are you doing? So we've got to fight it. And the only way we're really going to fight that, um, that, uh, that subconscious program is by having a desire, having a goal that is so freaking big and exciting, but scary that you look at it and you go, ah, I have no idea how I'm going to do it. And that's good. <laughs> if you, if you know how to do it, if you go, I know if I, let's say it was a million dollars. Well, I know if I actually sell, you know, 50 people into this particular program, that'll equate to a million dollars. If you knew how to work it out, it's still a great goal perhaps, but maybe it's a B type goal. Maybe it's a sub goal, you know, and the goal, and this is, <laughs> this will sound weird. The goal is not the goal. The goal is for you to grow. The goal yeah. is for you to enjoy the journey yeah. and to actually become 100%. this amazing person. Yeah. 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 It's not about like, yes, we want you to achieve the goal, but it's not about the goal. And the reason I mentioned that, um, I personally, you know, cause I get asked the question a lot. What's, you know, cause they see me meeting all these amazing people and earning all this great money. They say, well, what's the, what's the best thing that's ever happened to you on this journey? Or what's the most, uh, you know, had, what's the most successful thing you've done? I say the most successful thing I've done is that moment. And I've had a few of them, a few times, more than a few, where I make a decision. This is where action comes into it. I make a decision quickly and I go, Oh my God, I, <laughs> I would never have made that decision before. Or I can, when you can yeah. see your growth, when you can personally see the growth, yeah. it's like, Oh, it to me, it gets me excited. I think, yeah. oh my God, I can't wait to the next one, you know? And yeah. so to me, that's, that's, that's success to me. That is, that is very powerful. Sorry for interrupting, but that is very powerful. Okay. Like what I heard and what I understand that people should have bigger problems. And yeah. I, yeah. I can, because people, they just have two small problems, you know, like, oh my God, like my, um, uh, my kettle is not working properly. Like, oh, look at this shoe. Like there's just so little problems that they're not going to change their lives. Like just try for the problem. They would be like, oh my God, I'm starting this business. I need five people to employ. And like, I, I need to get, you know, whatever hundred thousand revenue coming in this year. Like this is a problem. It, it, it will get your brain going to different, like this is a different frequency going. Instead of thinking about like, oh my God, like I, like I need to buy something, you know, like all these things that people are thinking about, they think it's important because again, they, what, what you're saying, they operate on the system already. So they need to install that system. So what's the way installing that? Because uh, before I'm going to ask you, it's, you, you know, we live in an information age, right? There's a lot of people yeah. telling different things. And that's why I think a lot of people are struggling with taking the first step because they don't know where, where to take the advice from because if they go on a YouTube, I mean, there's just too much information. Like we, we struck, like we are suffocating from, from all the information, but we, sh we are looking for that wisdom, right? Whatever the quote is. So like, how do people even get started? Like, what is the first step? Like for somebody who is stuck, they, they, they've probably been similar or are in the similar positions that you've been like, what is the first step for them? Okay. First thing they've got to be, <clears throat> they've got to be prepared to change. So they've got to have the awareness. They've got to have the awareness that there's something wrong and they've got to, they've got to make a decision that mm -hmm. they're going to change. Right now in this book, and actually oh, there's so much I keep thinking to tell you, but um, <laughs> cause I'm so excited about this information as you know, it's a big topic. Book, it's this, a big topic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's huge. So for 20 years, I had over 20 years, I had this book and I had a bookmark in it. And I think I was like, maybe two, maybe two chapters in if I was lucky. And in that book, um, there's basically, I mean, there's so many things in that, in this particular book, there was something that, um, stood out to me that made a huge, huge difference. And, you know, well, actually there's the, <laughs> the self-confidence formula has been great, but <clears throat> 
the one thing that, uh, that I was going to tell you about with this book, when I finally got into it and I finally, actually the way I, okay, I'm going to go back a step. When I finally made that decision, I mentioned that Bob's, you know, reading this book every single day. I said, okay, I, ha I haven't been great at reading. Like I mentioned, you know, not even two chapters in, in 20 years. Um, I'm not great at reading. I love books. I've got heaps of books, heaps and heaps of books. And but I read a little bit and I put them on the shelf or I read a little bit, put it on my bedside table. I'm sure many people can relate to it. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, well, if I want, I want to consume, you mentioned this just a moment ago about um, consuming the right sort of stuff, you know, le letting mm -hmm. go of things that really don't serve you. And th this is the thing I mentioned about building your strength, you know, it's building your mental strength. And when I was on Jack Canfield's show, I mentioned before, um, at the very end, he said to me, what's the one thing that you could say has probably helped you to have the success that you've had? What's the one thing that you maybe have done or, or heard? And I said, you know what? I made a decision. And because <clears throat> like in the past, I would and this is actually, this is the thing I was going to mention in the book. I made a decision that I was going to stop being afraid of failing and I was going to start to be afraid of trying. So I needed to just do it. Like if I felt, and so what I did is I asked myself this question and everyone can do this. This is a, this is probably my secret to actually getting going <clears throat> and really making really good decisions. So once you've got the goal locked in, Make that decision. You're not going to be afraid to fail. And the way you can do it, whenever you're in that moment where you're going to make a big decision, say to yourself this question, does this have an ability to get me closer to my goal? And if you feel like the answer is yes, make the decision. Just do it. And on the flip side, if you feel like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm really, like, you're really having a battle with it, still make a decision. Say no. Doesn't mean you can't go back to it later make yeah. a decision. Now that's what I was going to mention in the book is that um, of the 500 people that Napoleon, the 500 of the most successful people in the early 1900s that Napoleon Hill interviewed, because it took him 25 years to put this particular book together. And in fact, that was the uh, decision that he made uh, with Andrew Carnegie, who at the time was the richest man in the world, a steel magnate. Mm -hmm. um, and he, so out of all the 500 people and exactly the same as him, so he felt like he was in good company, uh, they said that on, the only thing that they could all agree upon, in fact, nearly everything else they didn't agree upon, the one thing was that they all agreed that, yes, they made very quick decisions. They did not procrastinate. They made decisions that could be yes yeah. or no. They did not say, let me have a think about it. But sometimes you're not going to make the, the right decisions because they're probably just a lack of experience or lack of knowledge. So I feel like because I made similar decisions previously myself, I said, listen, I'm going to make like this year, I'm going to make as much mistakes as possibly I can. And what I'm saying by that is like, I'm not going to go and just like stupidly do whatever, like, you know, like without even thinking kind of on autopilot. But was like, look, I need to make more mistakes and those mistakes have to be probably, you know, bigger or smaller, but like I have to make mistakes and that means I'm moving forward with, with something. But at the same time, I know the quickest way to the success is learning for other people's mistakes. So there's both, like, there's always two, two sides ones, yeah. to that. Yeah, there's always two sides to, to yeah. the coin. And there's, again, what you said, there's so much information, like in this topic, we probably can go through for hours and hours <laughs> and hours, like discovering, because like, People searching, I think people, what they are looking for, they are looking for the shortcuts, for the recipe. That's why they clicked on the video on this interview. They're, they're looking for something. Again, and there's so many golden nuggets that you gave to the people. But at the end of the day, is there a secret? Like, is there yeah. actually a that, secret or there's a secret recipe? Is yeah. it? So that's a, great, <laughs> that's a great question because the movie The Secret didn't give the secret. Yeah. And in fact, Bob, you know, Bob will say, you know, they're, they're talking about the law of attraction. You know, and the law of attraction is definitely a really, really important part of the process. You know, you mentioned about manifesting and sometimes feels like manifesting a miracle. That still takes action. And so the secret 
um, and sorry, the secret that Bob mentions is that the law of attraction is a secondary law when we're talking about universal laws. The law of vibration is the main law. And so everything mm -hmm. is in a high speed of vibration, literally yeah. everything, this computer, yeah. you know, us, our bodies, you know, everything's in a high speed of vibration. So what that means is when we're thinking about thought is that if we get on the right vibration or Bob talks about getting on the right frequency, then you'll be able to attract whatever it is that you're going after, but you've got to be Energy, yep. aligned. And in fact, Abraham, who's, you know, essentially source or non, uh, non physical beings, there's multiple um they talk exactly that like you've got to be on the right frequency to attract what yeah. it is you're going after because the law of attraction works all of the time oh yeah and, and just that's, to go and, and sorry for interrupting and that's why i don't like when it. people say like because people say oh look it's all the bs like universal attraction like it look it, it's just like probably a, a sci-fi movie or something you guys talking about no like this is a reality and probably some of you who are watching this just go back to your you know, recent memory, maybe that was a couple months ago when you used to go out and maybe meet people, but you, you probably guys or girls have the situation when you are in the room and somebody walked in and the energy just changed because yeah. they, 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 they just have this different frequency and it, it's so powerful and you get those from successful people or negative people and it's a frequency it's a different so i mean that's very powerful and i mean the, the, the way like every every time something approaches you or you approach people you can see the way they react is because again what you're thinking the way you present yourself and that's energy right that's the frequency so that's very important that's super important <clears throat> you're 100 percent correct and you know it just you just made me think and i was thinking uh you know there's plenty of movies out there when you yeah. see someone that is, you know, failing at life and then they get a concussion or they lose their memory and all of a sudden they've, they've dropped all those limiting beliefs and people love them and they're like, they're having these great conversations because yeah. they're not being themselves because they're not stuck, you know, in those, those old limiting uh, belief patterns that they run. The law of attraction is science. Like it's not a, it's not like people think, oh, it's, you know, woo woo when it's like spiritual, um, mm -hmm. you know, mumbo jumbo. It's not, you know, quantum physics has proved, you know, a lot of these uh, things that we talk about and, and sure, like, you know, and I'd have to agree the movie, the secret, um, you know, as much as it might not give you the full secret and I'm going to give something at the end of this. So I'll make sure that I do. I'll leave some space. Um, it didn't give the secret, but what it did do is it woke a lot of people up, you know, gave people an ability to actually start their journey. You know, I will be forever grateful that Rhonda made a decision or Rhonda actually her story, you know, is in the movie, you know, she was like, I don't know if she was bankrupt, but she certainly had no money and her daughter brought her this book. Now the book was the science of getting rich by Wallace D Waddles. And it's also one of the books that Bob, you know, he, the whole seminar he did just, uh, you know, a few weeks ago was all based around the book, um, The Science of Getting Rich. If you haven't read it, just like Think and Grow Rich, you know, it's, a, it's another amazing book. And in fact, that book might make you think, you know, how is this possible? It, you have to go through it, you know, numerous times. The same thing, like all of this, it takes time. Yeah. You know, when you first hear some of this stuff, like, you know, it took me 13 years to finally understand that i needed to actually reprogram these paradigms now i remember when that finally when i finally got when i finally understood what the hell was wrong i thought because i was 43 i thought why couldn't i have been 30 something why couldn't i have been 20 something you know exactly. why couldn't it have yeah, happened yeah, yeah. earlier but what i also recognized when i made when i asked myself that question i thought ah oh, it's because plenty of people get to an older age get to a mature age get past their 20s and 30s and think maybe this is just how life's meant to be. Maybe yeah. I should just d deal with it. Maybe I should just accept that I'm going to always be poor. Mm. I'm always going to be a failure or I'm always going to have a crappy job. You know, that's what happens. And law of attraction will keep bringing you that. Yeah. This is why law of attraction is so important yeah. is because if you just, if you just continually think, well, that's just how life is, well, that's just how it works for me. Yeah, of course that's just how it works for you. Cause you're saying it, stop yeah. saying that. You know, that's that's quitting that that's given up that's quitting right there yeah. so yeah it is and, and look and that's why you know when i finally when i finally said ah oh, that's why it took me so long is because you know i've got a big mission you know my mission my definite chief aim as 
Napoleon in his book again, gets you to make a decision on, you know, my definite chief aim is to become, you know, one of the most uh, important thought leaders of the 21st century. That's my, that's my goal, you know, and it's yeah. a mission not to make me feel better. It's a mission because I love helping people. That's what I've done in all my careers. Yeah. I've loved helping people. So it's been part of my DNA. You know, it was yeah. my, let's call it a destiny. It just took me a long while to wake up. But the reason it took me a long while to wake up is because plenty of people get to an older age and they think, Oh yeah, here's someone talking about their success, but they've been successful since I was in their mid twenties. Bob Proctor, twenty six. Grant Cardone, twenty six. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, you know, they, that's the maturing age. You know, twenty five yeah. to twenty eight years of age probably is the you know the coming of age sort of age. And I sort of did, you know, in its way, but kept you know because of my old programming from probably when I was a baby, you know, from a very young age. Yeah. Kept bringing it through. Anyway, yeah. I'm gonna. I could go on and on. I'm gonna yeah. bring it back to the the question you asked. Um, what is the secret? So, what you're gonna need to do and get a pen and paper if you haven't got it already. You're gonna need to write this down. You're gonna you're gonna make a decision. What is Hold my on. goal? Hold on, because I need to get it as well. Because this is this is I'm, again. I'm doing this from a selfish standpoint, so I need to know. Please. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, with your pen, write. Um, write big goal just write big goal and what you're going to do is you're just going to write down like just write down ideas of things that you would desire now remember this has to be something that you truly desire so work out what it is now you could write down 20 things you could write down five things um, a lot of my clients you know it's it's all different numbers it doesn't really matter it's not what what will what really does matter is getting to the point where you just make a decision on one big thing that you truly desire. Now, when you, when you lock that in, look at it and say, is it big enough? Now, what I mean mm -hmm. by that is, can you look at it and go, if I was to meet this person and then they introduced me to that person. And if I, if you can actually plan it out, if you can plan out how you're going to get there, it is not big enough. And remember, the goal is not the goal. The goal is for you to grow. The goal is for you to become way more than you are right now, which means you're going to change a lot of that internal programming. That moves us to step two. So you're going to, you're going to figure out what your goal is. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Step two is we're going to work out what are, like, when you think about this big goal you're going to go after, this is a question I ask myself. Does the... Do the, does the personality or do the um, habitual behaviors that I emit now as Brett right now, mm -hmm. do those behaviors, are they going to help me when I finally achieve this goal? <clears throat> the answer was no. <laughs> so I, I wrote down all the different parts of my behavior that I felt weren't really serving me. Yeah. Now they're, they're what, as I mentioned before, your a paradigm is a multitude of habits or habitual behaviors. Mm -hmm. So when you know what these things are, we can work out what is one or two. And you, you might have a list of five. You might have on your list of two or three. It doesn't really matter. We're going to work out what is the number one. And we're going to actually program. So we're going to reprogram, I should say, on the opposite. So with a, uh, like get a blank piece of paper and write down the non-productive behavior. On the opposite side, you're going to write down what is the polar opposite? What is that behavior? How does it look in a positive way? Now, once we've got that, and in fact, you might even want to do it on a separate sheet of paper because you want to, you want to shred all the negative ones. Once you've got all the mm. positive ones, just get rid of all the negative. You know, it's symbolic. Shred yeah. it, burn it, <laughs> do it safely. Um, and then when, you, when you're left with the positive ones, we're actually going to work out what's the most important one. What's the, and like for me, um, I, at the time, I wasn't, very, I wasn't very disciplined. I definitely wasn't very organized and I definitely wasn't very efficient. Now, I used all three of those because I, <laughs> I thought I need to improve on all of them and they all kind of work together. Yeah. So I used that as one affirmation. So what you're going to do is you're going to create um, an affirmation. You could do one or two at a time. I had three just because they all, they all work together. If you've, got, if, you've got, uh, if you've got behavior which all works together, you can combine them if you think it works. But my advice is you've got to get laser focused. So same with the goal. 
one big goal that we're working towards. It doesn't mean you're not going to achieve all the other things that you want to achieve organically. And it does, believe me, that's what happened to me. Um, but what you're going to find is once we actually work out what are the, what are the behaviors that you're emitting that actually aren't serving you, that you know aren't going to help you get to where you want to get to, and we reprogram them. So we actually write down the positive ones. We number them in what order we think that they, you know, we want to work on them. Mm -hmm. Now, the exciting part is, so when you're, when you create affirmation for your, for your big goal, you want to create a picture. So when you're saying an affirmation of what you're actually going after, you want to build a picture. When you close your eyes and you're saying out these words, words alone won't actually bring whatever you're going after to you. It's in the feeling. And in fact, Neville Goddard, another amazing writer, wrote a book on it. Feeling is the secret. The, <laughs> there's a secret. The feeling. You've got to get it. If you want to work with the law of attraction, get on the right mm -hmm. vibration, the right frequency, you've got to feel it. And you, the more you get into that feeling of how it feels to actually already have what you're going after, the easier and the quicker it's actually going to come to you. The other part, and I didn't mention this before, the other part with a goal, you want to lock in a date. Lock in a date for when you want it. Yeah. The reason we lock in a date, it's like when, when you think about uh, when you have to go for a test or if you, you know, let's say you've got a... Uh, if you're into bodybuilding, <laughs> say you've got a bodybuilding competition and it's coming up a certain date, you know that you've got a certain amount of weeks and you've got to break it all down to work out how you can actually get into that shape to potentially win, you know, or not look stupid <laughs> on stage. So, you know, it's the same thing with this. For us to get to the goal, we don't need to know how to get to the goal, but we do need to get started. Yeah. So having a date, because if you just said, oh yeah, five years, maybe 10 years, if you didn't lock in a time, Mm -hmm. then the likelihood is you'll think, oh, it's great. I'm going to get there one day. Yeah, there's and no rest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm telling you this from experience, not with me, but with a client. Now, I, I still have this client today. I won't mention his name. <laughs> he, um, when we first started talking, I said, uh, do you have a goal? And he said, yeah, yeah, I've got a goal. I've been working on this goal for, for five years. And I said, oh, that's amazing. And uh, it was a big it was a big amount of money. And so two things uh, needed to be fixed in his goal. Nothing wrong with the goal. It was $10 million. I'm sure I'm not mentioning his name. <laughs> so I'm sure he wouldn't even care if I did. Anyway, it's $10 million that he's going after. He's still going after. Um, I said to him, okay, when are you, when do you expect to have this? And he said, uh, I don't know. Like I, when I get there. That's a problem. Okay. Yeah. Right, number one, that's problem number one. Problem number two, I said, what are you gonna do with the money? Uh -huh. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, <laughs> <laughs> you, why do you want $10 million? He said, oh, yeah. cause it'll be, you know, I can do Sounds more good. things. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, I can do more, like I can do more with my life and you know, I can look after my family and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I said, look, you need to get really locked into why you want $10 million cause you can't build a picture. I said, yeah. it's great. I said, it, you've had persistence to be working on a, a goal like that for five years is great, like really good, you know, but it's very hard for you to build that feeling if you don't know what it looks like. Have you ever seen $10 million in person? No. Well, does $10 million, the actual money, the actual paper money, does that excite you? No. Well, what, what the money can do. That? Yeah. What the money can do probably yeah. excites them more. Yeah. Yeah. So we, but the point is we've got to build a picture yeah. and this, so he needs a date. I said, you've got to lock in a date. When do you want this by? Lock it in, you know? So, you know, and I like to think, you know, the sooner the better, but if it's a big goal, maybe make it a year, you know, maybe make it a year, um, you know, and it should be a big goal. <laughs> so it should and be around Bre a year. Brett, Brett, can I ask you, can I ask you a question? So first yeah. of all, thanks. That, that That's some powerful information. I, and I got, uh, Few things written here, as you see here. So on the, because I, I just love everything that I can implement myself, you know, as a, as a business person into my own personal life. And again, most of the time, like what we're going through here, it's kind of a basic things. But again, like look at any master at anything could be again, as you mentioned, bodybuilding, fitness, uh, could be business, could be you know wh whatever, doing the charities. So like all these people master the basics, and that's what it is. You know, talking about the ten thousand hours, you know, doing that type of thing. So, but I just want to cover one thing because again, um, 
for the people who are gonna start taking these steps, you know there's gonna be one problem. They will come across the days when it's gonna be like, oh my God, I don't wanna do it anymore. And again, I know like you need to get in a routine, you need to get installed a brand new system, but maybe they didn't reach that threshold when they have this brand new system in their head. They know what they want it, they break through the habits, some, you know, but they're, they're in the process of, you know, to this brand new life. But like, this is gonna happen. Probably they're gonna wake up to, you know, three days from now, they will be like, oh my God, it's raining. Uh, my dog just, you know, you know, on a carpet. It, it just yeah. like everything is wrong, man. Like today is a bad day. Like I don't want to do anything today. So like, how do people, when they start, you know, shifting the mindset, like how do they get through those bad days? So th this is why, this is exactly why I said to you, if people just lock into the big goal, mm. if they just lock into what they truly desire and they get emotionally involved in it, you know, and it might take them, mm -hmm. It could be very quick, you know, because you might have been thinking about it loosely. But once you get really locked into it and it starts to seep into your subconscious mind as a belief, what's going to happen is you'll have those days where you don't feel like it, you want to give up. I've had many of them. Yeah. Not lately, but I've had many of them in, at the start of the journey because you're fighting the old program. You're creating these new habits. You're doing things that you maybe at the time don't really feel like doing, don't really want to do lots of excuses coming in because that's what the subconscious mind does. Mm -hmm. It brings to you ways to help you to get back on track. Ah, stop doing this. You know, it's not going to take you to where you want to get to. It will. I promise you it will. But it's like anything. When you first started the gym, I'm using that one because it's an easy one for most people. When you first started a gym and you start doing the exercises, you get a bit sore and you feel good a little bit, but then you, you know, it starts to get a bit much and you're not really in, not used to doing it. You're not really seeing a lot of results. And so you kind of think, Oh, I just don't know if this is really going to pay off for me. Mm -hmm. It pays off. It really, <laughs> it'll pay off. It's, <clears throat> it's uh, natural. It's very natural, but we don't, we're not brought up with these uh, teachings. Yeah. It should be in school. These sort of things should be in school. Should be that's, a in school. that's a different topic. Yeah. Yeah. It is. We could go on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just to get back to the to finish it off um, for the secret. So lock into a big goal. It's going to help you. And, and in fact, there's a people can look it up or I can share it with them. There's a uh, a speech that Albert E. N. Gray delivered back in the '60s, and it's called the Common Denominator of Success. And he had to give this speech, and he thought. I don't really know, know anything about success and I haven't had a lot of success myself. So he had to interview a lot of people and out of everyone that he interviewed um, or out of a lot of people he interviewed, one of the things that kept coming back was that people would do, so the really successful people would do the things that you and I, perhaps if, you know, if we weren't successful that we wouldn't want to do and actually wouldn't do, they would do them not because they wanted to do them, they did them because their purpose or their reason for doing it was so much stronger than their excuses. Mm -hmm. So this is, the, this is the thing that people need to know. So if you don't lock into a purpose, which could be a big goal that you're working to, towards, if you don't lock into it, it's going to be very hard, like your will. Okay, I just want to throw this one bit down. I, I said this before, that um, study, the conscious mind, the speed, so neuroscience, a neuroscience study, can't remember the exact year, but it was a number of years ago. The conscious mind, its speed is 40 bits per second. That's how fast it operates, 40 bits per second. The subconscious mind operates at 40 million bits per second. Wow. Now, if you understand what I'm talking about, like that's, you've got a, let's say you've got a strong will. I'm very strong willed. You know, if I put my mind to it, I can usually make it happen. Well, when you're going after something up. really big, it doesn't matter how strong your will is, you know, the subconscious mind mm -hmm. is powerful, very, yeah. very powerful. And it is powerful in good ways and powerful in bad ways yeah. or, you know, not so productive ways. So that's my, my really it affects, it affects it affects the decision making process definitely because the subconscious yeah. mind will make a decision first before the conscious mind will so again super valuable like i, I know we we go in quite long and i know the time is precious here but just one last question that i want to ask you because yeah, i think it's uh, 
it's still very important for people to understand the importance of money. And first of all is like, uh, congrats to your client and shout out, big shout out to him because he's thinking, you know, I like those type of people who are thinking in these type of numbers. And again, it's just not about the number. It's not about the $10 million. Like the 20K person that you mentioned, that's fine. Look, that's a goal, but that's completely different thinking. And that's why I like those type of people. And I think a lot of people are being drawn to those people because it's just a thing. The thing is enormous, you know, and that's what I like. So, you know, so like, look, everybody admire like Elon Musk, you know, cause he, he like yeah. everybody having these problems, like, oh my God, my, as I mentioned, the kettle is not working and he's looking to fly to Mars. That's, yeah. that's, that's completely different thinking right here. But let's talk about the money a little bit because I think, um, for people need to understand, like, because I think a lot of people, including myself before, I looked at the money completely different way, and that was a false perspective on, on the money. Uh, so what way people should look at the money? Because you're coming from a yeah. service perspective. And I think, you know, in my opinion, again, you mentioned money is energy, and like money is equal to the service that, that you can provide or solve or products, whatever that might be, equals to the amount that you get back. So I don't know, give, give me your perspective on money and how people should look at that. Okay. This is a really, really good question because I can tell you from experience, so, you know, I was able to make quite a lot of money uh, in a very short space of time. And that was through taking action, you know, I had to make decisions and, you know, and then those decisions, I would reach out to people and it would, you know, organically start to work. Now, I got to a certain stage where I was at the end of last year, I was really pushing to make business flow so I could make some bigger things happen. And what I was doing wrong was I started to um, push against push against the grain, as in I was trying to make things happen. Now, this is an important key for people to think about, is that when you are, let's, and we're using money as the example, when you, when you make a decision that you actually want to earn a certain amount of money, you need to deliver service. So what are you prepared to give first? Most people think, um, give me the money and then I'll do the work. Or I'll do, if I know I'm going to get the money, I'll do the work. No, do the work you will get the money. Yeah. So my advice to you is like the reason now that, and especially now during COVID that I've had such success is I'll actually do the work. So you get paid after you do the work. It's a simple, you know, simple way of looking at it. So deliver more service than you expect to be paid for. You know, it's one of the uh, key ingredients and even uh, Napoleon Hill in writing this book, you know, or before he even went on the journey. Andrew Carnegie said, um, I've got a job for you, but you're not going to be paid for 20 years, for over 20 years. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and you're going to have to do, yeah, 20 years worth of work. And he made a decision to take it on. Um, I'm not suggesting anyone needs to wait 20 years, you know, unless you want to be something like Napoleon Hill, um, because he, he earned, you know, millions upon millions of dollars, you know, mm. after he created this book and, and others, the laws, law of success and some other books. Um, and he's left a, an amazing legacy, you know, like Andrew Carnegie said, um, I think this is a quote. Uh, I want you, he goes, I want you to um, meet me at the, well, it's a horse racing analogy, you know, like he wanted him, he said, you, you should be thinking that you can beat me at the post that you should actually win. Beat me. And, and, Napoleon Hill at the time thinking, how am I going to beat Andrew Carnegie, the richest man in the world? Like it just seemed ludicrous. Now, uh, Napole uh, sorry, Andrew Carnegie, I think had uh, helped, you know, maybe about 10 people become millionaires. I might be getting this number wrong, but anyways, a smaller number than what Napoleon Hill has. Napoleon yeah. Hill has helped, I think a million people become millionaires. Maybe yeah. that's the number. So, you know, the point is that, when you make a decision towards what you actually want, it might, even if it's a small thing, like, you know, I want to earn an extra thousand dollars. Well, make the decision that it's possible. Number one, make the decision. You're actually going to create an affirmation mm -hmm. as if you've already achieved a thousand dollars. So, so happy it could be, this is Bob's terminology. I'm so happy and grateful now that I've earned that thousand dollars. I knew I was going to earn and just keep saying that, you know, write it down, 
keep writing it out, write it out a hundred times a day, say it as much as you possibly can and you'll find that it will act because what you're seeking is seeking you. So this is the law of attraction. When you get on that frequency, that vibration, because you're believing it, you're feeling it, you're going, ah, oh. you know, and <laughs> this is where the terminology is wrong. You can be, I can't wait till I get it. It's not, I can't wait till I get it. I can't, like, I'm so happy that I've got it now. Because yeah. this is the thing, in our mind, sorry, we create things twice. The first time we create it is in our mind. So your imagination, everything in this world, if we did not imagine something, we yeah. would not have created something. This computer, this video yeah. that we're talking through now, someone came up with the idea in their mind and they created it. Like it, you know, some things, and in fact, um, we've heard the stories, uh, the guy... Marconi, who created the telephone, I think he might be in Thinking Grow Rich, he um, came up with this idea to create the radio or the radio frequency. And his family or his friends thought that he was completely mad. In fact, they had him um, put in a mental asylum. So he was, he was putting a mental asylum because mm. he was just thinking something was so ridiculous. Out of, out of you know, the world, yeah. Out of the world, yeah. And it's the same with the Wright brothers, you know, putting yeah. a plane in the air, you know, they were bicycle mechanics. So there are many things that we could think, you know, are almost impossible or, you know, so far out of reach or, you know, I don't know how to do that. You know, oh, I've never been able to do that before. Remember all that <laughs> negative talk that we have going on. Mm -hmm. So make the decision that it's possible and then program it. If you program it into your subconscious mind and it won't feel, it's an easy pro sorry, it's a simple process, but it's not easy. It's simple to do, simple to create. It's not easy and most people don't do it because you've got to push past that pain barrier. Mm. It's the same when you go to the gym, I'm using that analogy again. Yeah. You know, you push past the pain barrier to get the gain. You know? Yeah, getting, just make it make it yeah, making it habitual, you know, like every day, yeah. like whatever, like it's raining, you have problems because problems will always rise. I mean, it's impossible. Yep. We're living in a world where there is people and most of the time it's either people or technology or something is causing the problem. So, I mean, you just have to deal with it and learn to be flexible. That's another thing. And, and just, again, if you, if you have your mind in the right place, and that's why this interview is all about getting your mind in the right place, whatever the problem is, if it's a kettle, which is not working, if it's your dog who just peed on the carpet, or if it's a COVID, it doesn't matter. Like you have the, the, the right mind, you know, and you know how to break through patterns, first of all, and how to solve problems in, in your head before you start solving problems in your life. So it's super powerful. I'm just very grateful, you know, because again, I know you're a go-giver. You're a really generous man, you know, giving all this time uh, today on the podcast. And I know we can cover a lot because again, that's a topic who, which is a very dear to my heart as well, because I do understand the importance of it. I just want people to understand, like, look, it, it's not a hoax. It's it's a true, like, it's a science. Like, you can go and do the research yourself. And again, make sure that you go and grab uh, the right information because there's a lot of yeah. bad information. Like, there's so much information on YouTube, Google. So go and reach out, you know, to to uh, to Brad himself. Uh, again, on breaddscott.com. Uh, of course, you're gonna find all the links, all the social medias, you know, on um, in the description as well. Just get the right information from the right people who are doing it every day, who are already work in the process. And you know, one of the other things that I often say to anyone who watches me or listens to me is, you know, I don't care if people want to work with me or not. It's not none of my business. <laughs> if they like what I do and they resonate with me, then reach out to me. But if if I'm yeah. not your person, that's fine. But if you want more out of life, just you've got to make a decision to reach out to someone. Stop yeah. trying to figure it out yourself. That was my, my biggest downfall uh, in even in the careers that I worked in. You know, I, I could have taken it to new heights if I had have invested in someone to help me. Invest in a mentor. And the reason I say invest is because the, f <laughs> the first time I invested in a coach who was one of Bob's other top consultants, um, it was like, I was thinking, what am I doing? Like, I was thinking, this is the most money I've ever spent on something like this ever. And the great thing that happens when you invest in yourself is, especially if you don't, if it's a lot of money, you go, I need to get that return on investment. I yeah. need to get the return on my investment. How am I going to get the return on my investment? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to follow what that person tells you to do. So if it's not me and it's someone else, 
invest in them, pay yeah. them. Don't look for a way to get it for free. Yeah. Pay them to help you. Whatever they tell you to do, do. Some things yeah. may, so, sorry, some things may not work. doesn't matter. Some things will work. I promise you some things will work, you know, and you'll adapt and some things will work really well. Yeah. And remember that, remember that thing I said to you, at the st- oh, not at the start, but not long ago, you've got to be prepared to fail. And you said it yourself, you know, make a decision. It doesn't matter if you fail. It doesn't matter if you win. In fact, it's great if you win, but it's also yeah. great if you fail because through the failure, you know, not really failure, but through the not working out, you can work out how it can work out. You can actually, you know, it's like when you make that decision towards working towards the goal, the other thing that they would say is they, they could change their way they got to that goal as much as they wanted. Like, in fact, you could change it a million times. It doesn't matter how many times you change the way you get there. Just never change the goal. Yeah. Never change what you're going after. Just make the decision you're going to keep working towards that yeah. um, because you'll get there. Whatever you decide to do, you know, and if you don't get there in the time that you allot for it, just move the allotted time. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what I did. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That, is, that, is, that is awesome. I love it because, again, I told you guys that the story is going to be pretty powerful. And, again, there's, there is so much to it and we probably missed, missed uh, a lot of the stuff, but uh, hopefully we covered some, uh, you know, great topics here as well for you guys. So let us know in the comments, how do you feel about this? Uh, and if, if something was valuable and you think is kind of a nugget that you're looking to apply, you know, leave that in the comments as well. I would love to hear what was the best takeaway from this interview. And uh, it's just, it's just amazing. Like I'm still looking at the website and I mean, it is, is, you're providing a lot of great value. And again, I would love to people to reach out on what you mentioned. It doesn't matter. Like for you, it doesn't matter. But I think it matters, should matter for people because it's not about like, oh my God, I like this guy, doesn't like this guy. Like it, just look at the results in life. You know, that's what I'm looking at. Because before in my life, I took a lot of bad decisions. I took a lot, I made a lot of bad decisions from the people that I took you know, advice from that had, you know, I always somehow thought before, when I was, you know, younger, like if the person is in fifties or sixties, I always thought like, Oh my God, this person has life experience. So I should probably take his advice, you know? And that yeah, was, absolutely. that was, and that was stupid, you know, because you, you have yeah. to look at the end result. You have to observe and look, okay, this person actually acquired success, whatever the level, cause there's different levels, but just have the success that I want to achieve. And does it have the, the tools for me to, to get there? So that's what I want to people to reach out because if it's, if it's not you, it's, it's somebody else, but just people need to go again and pay the price. What you said, the YouTube is not going to work yeah. in the long term, you know, cause YouTube, no, no, look, YouTube cannot answer all your questions because this is the conversation that you need to have. Look, and as you said, you know, the, the other part to it is with having a coach or a mentor, it's not just the knowledge that they have, but it's someone that you're actually going to commit to, to actually keep you accountable. Yeah. You know, someone who's going to make that's sure great, that yeah. you do what you need to do. That's sometimes the, um, it was definitely the thing that I needed. I needed someone to actually keep me, <laughs> keep me in check, you know, I, am I doing what I need to do? Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be the clincher for some people, yeah. you know, finding someone that they agree that they're actually going to do what they say and also that they're going to keep doing, you know, sending through the material, sending through what they're actually doing to make sure that they're staying on top of it. Yeah. Look, my, Michael Jordan, you know, think about the, all the yeah. great people. Michael Jordan, he had a coach. Why do you yep. think all the great ones still have a coach? Accountability. Yeah. And they still know they are humble enough to like, okay, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm great. And that's what they claim it. Like, look at uh, Muhammad Ali. He said before he entered the ring, he said, I'm the greatest. And then he followed yeah. through with the work ethic, with everything. But all these great people, they have coaches and they, they constantly have coaches and they're constantly looking to improve. So for somebody who's like lost in life to say, oh, like, I don't need it. I'm just going to go from, you know, grab a few videos from YouTube. It's, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Do you know, it, that one thing, you know, investing in a coach, now it doesn't, for me, it's not just, not just one coach. I've invested in four coaches or five coaches. Um, <clears throat> my actual, uh, my main coach now is James Whitaker, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy. And that book is also a movie as well. And he co-produced that movie. And it highlights a lot of the more modern day, you know, your Grant Cardone's, your Joel Brown's, a lot of the um, more well-known people of today's era who have used Think and Grow Rich to actually apply into their life. Um, 
And the reason I take on multiple coaches, if I don't know something or if I know someone has an ability, like you said before, has got the runs on the board and has an ability to teach me something that's going to help me to grow, Mm. I'll invest in them. You know, when I decided to write this triple best-selling book, I started writing it a couple of times. I I restarted it. I had three quarters of a book and I thought, this is an autobiography. I didn't want to write that. So I started again. I created some more structure to what I knew, which was not a lot. And I thought it's better, but it's not great. And I thought I need to invest in a coach. And I, and, and like when you talk about miracles, like instantly, Facebook brought up a. Um, uh, do you want to learn how to? This was on yeah on Facebook. Do you want to learn how to write a best-selling book? I thought, oh my god, how did Facebook hear that? It was in my yeah, head. Yeah, I know. Anyway, it came up. And then, and then minutes after, there was also another notification came up from Meetup saying, do you want to learn how to write a best-selling book? Wow. I was like, what the? You know, it was like, it, happened, it, was, it, happened it was amazing. For me. Yeah, it happened for me. And I think it happened for a lot of people. I don't know. I don't know. Again, that's coming back to the universe and the way it works. Because like, I, I'm looking yeah. to explore a couple of things myself right there. And I'm just getting DMs on Instagram right now. And it's like, oh, my God, here we go again. The universe is just keep bringing me stuff up. So, yeah, that, that does happen. That That's the true event. That's what I think is so powerful to have you on just to, you know, go back to the basics kind of thing. Because some of the stuff that you explain is kind of a basics. But we need to, like, well, most of the time we forget. And, again, we just look for all these, like, secrets. Again, which is not a secret. It's, like, just some basic ideas which worked for hundreds of years before. Like, coming back to, you know, Carnegie's and, you know, Napoleon Hills and all these times. Like, people, you know, there they were wealthy people hundred years back and same principles, you know, work until this day. Uh, but you know, it just, uh, it's easier to consume the, the information. Cause again, we have zoom, you know, we have Facebook, we have all this information in, in, on our fingerprint. So it's like, it's easy to, to get the information and consume it. So, I think, yeah. I, I think the other Please. thing is, and like, when you talk about basics, you know, we should all be thinking to get to basics or, be, you know, yeah. if, you, if you haven't got the success that you want, start with the basics because it's very easy, especially in this modern era, as you mentioned, with so much information out there to want to find the next shiny object. Yeah. You know, what is, the, <laughs> what is this next shiny way of actually, you know, getting more money or attracting something into my life? You know, what's the new fancy way to do it? No, like don't go after the new fancy way. Figure mm-hmm. out what's the simplest way you can do it. Cause it's not yeah. like if you go off to something that's, you know, technical and quite difficult and you've got to spend three weeks learning the process, you're not going to do it. You, mm. The likelihood of you doing that over doing something basic, yeah. not going to happen. You know, again, my advice is, yeah, and and you probably Brett, you probably Brett heard this, you know, before as well, because people, we as people actually look at things and we think is like when, when somebody like yourself who is experienced in the space, like you who understand the ins and outs of the mindset and people, how people should shift, should, should shift their minds and to achieve results. Some of that. And again, that's what I'm saying. It's basic stuff but it works but we as people look at it and we think no it can't be that it should be it should be more complicated right i, yeah. I need something that's complicated it. that's it yeah. yeah we do we we really do we think ah oh, that's that's why i said before it's these things are simple yeah. they're simple that's why you said they're basic they're simple but they're not easy yeah you know they're not easy yeah. and that's why you know 95 percent of people don't have the results you know yeah. because they're not they don't follow through because they've got bad habits. They've got bad habitual behavior. You've got to train. Like there's so many different, this is why I said it's a recipe and it, it's a lot longer than, you know, an hour and a half that it's been with us now. It's a lot longer of a conversation. And, you know, it takes me for some people it can take months for some people it can take weeks of us working together to really mm-hmm. nut out how it works. And individually, every single person has different habitual beliefs operating so yeah. we've got to work out what things need to move so there's a whole process you know and this is why i say it it it's basic but it's also a little bit technical you know that's yeah. why i say don't try and figure it out yourself you know <laughs> i spent 13 years i watched the movie the secret and thought i actually knew how to because i thought oh yeah i'm pretty good at manifesting little things yeah, yeah i could manifest little things i could manifest you know winning the top real estate award that could be seen as a pretty big thing, but I was very mm. good at sabotaging. So just mm. stop trying to work it out yourself, find someone who's actually been able to do it. Who's actually consistently doing it, who can teach you the basics, 
learn yeah. the basics and you'll, cause you'll keep learning. You'll find yeah. like, I read so many different books all the time because I'm always looking for more information. I'm now studying a doctorate in philosophy um, to learn more. Cause I want to be able to deliver yeah. lots more content to people as they grow. Not straight yeah. away, you know, it's like, you, 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 you know? yeah, you're improving along the way as well. Cause I know like Tony Robbins, yeah. which is well known, like a uh, business strategist and coach. I mean, he has coaches, like he has multiple coaches and yeah. he's, he's teaching thousands of people, same as a proctor, uh, you know, uh, Bob Proctor, you know, he's, he, I'm sure he's, you know, having mentors and coaches right now, probably physically and by, you know, reading the books and improving, it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, the, the day that you're going to stop, learning and improving that's the day you're going to start you know learning and declining in, in your life you know financially spiritually relationships so you just there's different levels and it's impossible again coming back to the thing that i'm saying like potential once you break through that whatever the threshold is you think like that guy is going to be through the 10 the 10 million he's going to be like okay so what's next there's a yeah. hundred million there's one billion so there's there's so many ways that you can like break through that and it's just it's a fun game because I think Donald yeah. Trump even said that like, like the money is just to keep the score, just to measure measure basically where you are in life, like, and that's that's the yeah. good way, you know. So exactly, yeah. So, so it's awesome. It's been it's been a long enough interview, but you know, <laughs> I enjoyed I enjoyed every minute of it. It's just a great time spent with you, and again, so much wisdom, knowledge, experience. You know, uh, so many different you know perspectives that we can take away from today. Again, you know. Uh, Again, maybe it's the wrong word to use basics, but it's just those great tips that people I think need in these times that will definitely yeah. work for them. So I want to say big, big thank you for you, you know, for being today on the show. Guys, you can always go to brettdscott.com or you can go, I'm going to put a link below where you can, uh, you know, schedule a call with him, strategy session for 45 minutes. That's a free call. So make sure that you jump yeah. on that. I mean, 45 minutes, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of great, great, great content from these 45 I'll, minutes. So I'll send them, I'll send them some extra content to help them regardless of whether they work with me or not. And even a go. chapter from my book, I fly. So there you go. yeah, there's, there's uh, you know, this is what I say, like, I can't work with everyone. But if I believe that we're a good fit for each other, I'll make it happen. I'll figure out a way to, to make it happen for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but even if we don't work together, you know, the thing that I always, you know, say at the end of my lives when I when on Facebook or Instagram, I'll say, make sure today you leave at least one person with the impression of increase. And that means have someone leaving you feeling better off having spent time with you than not. And it could also mean you actually helping someone without expecting anything in return, because that's the true meaning of giving. So, you know, that's the way I live my life. Um, it's the way I operate in business. And when I mentioned before about earning money, you know, I, I, I always, always, always do the work and then I'll worry about money later. And I actually don't worry about money. Money just comes, you know, money comes when I need it. Um, and it's the same thing for anyone. Everyone has that ability, but it takes a little time. You've got to go on a journey. You've got to change, you know, aspects of yourself. And it, it doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen quicker. And it'll happen quicker, like you said before, hire someone to help you. You know, whether it's me, if you love what I'm saying and you think, yeah, I want the Clark Kent turning into Superman guy to help me, because that's what my photo looks like yeah, <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason I made that photo, I've always loved Superman. And, at, you know, at the very beginning of this journey, when I finally had the breakthrough, I thought, oh, that's why I love Superman so much. It's not because of the Superman person outside. It's because I'm Clark Kent turning into Superman. I feel like I'm actually Clark Kent turning into Superman. Yeah. You know, we all have a super, we all have superpowers inside us. We're just not tapped into them. And that's what yeah. this whole thing that we're talking about mindset is about. It's not a fairy tale. It's, it's there for everyone anytime, yeah. but you've, you've got to make the decision to start and get help. <laughs> Don't do it alone. Yeah, and, and it's just figuring out what is your crypt tonight and not touching that as well. So, yeah, 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 yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is I, awesome. I definitely, 
I definitely was touching a lot of kryptonite, <laughs> but not <Yeah>. anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have a cape on and, and you're just flying over the place. You're helping a lot of people, you know, and just save, saving them, you know, basically that's what you do because you're a service oriented, yeah. you know, human being and that's where you've been destined. And I can feel that again through your life experience. You didn't even know what you've been destined for, but like through all the experience, you just, just bumped in all the like service oriented, you know, jobs. And now when you're here and you just like, when you align with your purpose, that's the most powerful. Because again, there's a lot of people, again, in the space, they're, they're, they find it sexy. Oh, I want to be a mindset coach, but maybe they're not destined for that. I'm sure they are destined for, for great things in life, but maybe that's not it. But looking at you and again, the experience that you had, I just feel like, and I see like what you're going through and helping all these, you know, people uh, reach amazing results uh, you, again you're destined for 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 this and you keep improving yourself so i'm like it, it's unbelievable so i would love to have another conversation probably you know a couple yeah. of years from now just to see you know where you where you're going to be then i'm sure you're going to be man you're going to be three three times bestseller and and probably <laughs> over top something doing something crazy you know i don't know i don't uh, know probably going to see you know all well, over the place on social media as well and well, I will be. And look, uh, I mean, my intention is to be a, a you know, an international or global yes. speaker. Yes. Um, you know, so that's, yeah, there's a lot of things coming for my future, but everyone has that ability. You'll, you'll be doing bigger things when we catch up again. Yep. You know, when you make the decision to go on that journey and you're feeding your mind with the right fuel, you're going to get to amazing places. You know, Bob likes to say, when you go on this journey, you'll need a telescope to look back and see how far you've come. And it's a hundred percent true. Yeah. I can't even see, <laughs> I can't even, I need a bigger telescope, you know, yeah. to see how far I've gone back. Yeah. Um, Cause I've, yeah. I've changed like, and I'll just put some, um, I know we, we should be finished by now, but <laughs> just to put some context on it. When I, yeah. when I started the journey as a student of Bob Proctor's work, when I invested in my first coach, her name is Marika, amazing lady. Um, I, I remember back then I'd made the decision that I wanted to be a consultant, but I thought it was going to take me a couple of years. I thought I'm going to need to learn all this information. It's take me a long time to learn. Now it didn't take me a long time to learn because I'd learned a lot of the information leading up to it unknowingly. You know, this is a, this is, a, <laughs> this is the interesting thing. I'd done some of the work along the way, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of prepared myself for this point unconsciously you know and you mentioned before i didn't really you know i was predestined for it but i didn't really know um that it was coming and so when i mentioned about locking into the big goal and i said to you that some things organically come to you it could be money could be people could be like you know my coach my main coach now james whitaker like that's a dream come true i would never have imagined i didn't even ask him to coach me he actually asked me because i was asking about something else to to get some help in and he said i can help you with that um, the, the becoming a coach that happened in six months for me, starting the journey, it happened in six months. And that's when I met Bob. And I remember thinking at the time, I can't believe it's come around so quick. And I believed I was ready because I made the decision before I actually met with Bob that I needed to be a coach in my own right. Although I didn't think I could do this particular coaching. I thought I would have to work my way up, which is the wrong way to think. But because I had already locked into the big goal and I was definitely, you know, moving towards it, it was an organic part of that process. So this is why I'm talking about growth. You know, it was one of those moments that I just went, Oh my God, I can't believe I made this decision, you know, cause I was thinking a year or two down the track, I'm going to do that particular mm -hmm. role. I'm just happy helping other consultants because I became a, an affiliate, like a head affiliate for my coach. Cause I was so good at bringing people to it. Cause you know, I had this effect. Now I bring those people to my business, you know? Um, so, you know, the, just to leave your people that are listening to this, like just the one thing that you need to do is just lock into something big. If you don't know what your purpose is, don't worry about it just yet. You'll, you'll discover it. You'll find it when you go on the journey, but just lock into something big, lock into something big and scary, but make sure you really truly desire it. Like, Oh my God. Like you can just thinking about it, like makes you think happy thoughts. Mm. Someone actually, one of the goals that someone wrote, um, one of my new clients wrote a goal down, which was to have an abundance of happiness. That was a goal. And I thought, what a great goal. 
abundance of happiness. I thought it's a great goal. It's not the goal you should work on for your big goal, but it's such a good thing to actually have because the more, the more we stay in that happiness, the more we stay in that high vibration of feeling joyful, feeling good, the easier it's going to be for you to keep moving towards what it is you're going after because you'll be on that higher vibration. That's yeah. where most of the frequency of the things that we actually want, the big things we're going after, they're on these high vibrations, mm -hmm. not on the low ones. It's the positive and negative, you know, it's the same type of thing. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. Oh, it definitely helps. I mean, you know, if, if something from one and a half hour interview, if you didn't find <laughs> anything, anything in this interview, I, I mean, I don't know what you've been listening to. Maybe you have your, uh, sound off or something i don't know but uh it, it's a tremendous value i mean there's so much that you can give and that's what i want people to reach out to you and just you know again if, if it's not the right fit that's perfectly fine no harm yeah. but uh, you know that's yeah. why we do these interviews for and again thank you for you know taking the time and and putting the effort in you know explaining people what it actually takes and like that's why it's important like during these times there's, you know, like unemployment numbers. I'm not sure how it goes in, in Australia, but in Europe and in the States, I mean, it's, it's pretty insane numbers. And a lot of people will start shifting towards, hey, listen, maybe I'm not like, I felt like maybe I wasn't destined to be an employee. Maybe I need to start to become my own business owner, which is a completely different mindset. Like you will need to work in the mindset part and learn how to be a business owner, work for yourself and be, you know, be there all the time and like break through the habit. Like there's a lot of different pieces. So I think that's why you're going to be yeah. so helpful for all these people, but because we're going to see a massive shift from being yeah. employees to working from home or being their own business owners. Cause that's the, that's the, you know, that's the situation where we are in currently. So yeah. yeah so okay. guys, if you enjoy the yeah. interview, you know that you already know what to do. Click the like, subscribe to the channel, uh, go and check it out. Brett's social media, so again, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, you probably have those. Uh, go and visit his website. Uh, definitely schedule for 45 minutes. I mean, it's a free call. It would be ridiculous not to take advantage of that. And uh, guys, as always, I'm going to see you on the next episode. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Martinez.